What's up? LD Shadow Lady here, and today I want to build a fantasy druid grove here in my Minecraft world. I've been inspired by the druid groves from games like World of Warcraft and Baldur's Gate, but I want to build one with my own little twist. So this druid grove is themed around sunflowers and the sun. But of course, first we must build the classic giant tree that sits at the heart of any druid grove. So I found this nice sunny spot on a hillside and I started building the most ancient and wise looking oak tree there ever was. I know it looks like a mess right now, but once we add the leaves it will be fine. Trust the process, because you can fix everything with leaves. Now I'm just going to time lapse the rest of my leaf placing endeavours because I went a bit insane. And for some reason I launched into this rather inspiring TED talk to myself. I'm not very good at this. That's not gonna stop me from trying, and that's why you shouldn't let your fail being bad stop you from trying anything. <laughs> but finally it's done, and it's time to show my life's work to the master of tree building himself, Smallish Beans. Yeah, what's up? Do you like my tree? Oh, funky. What do you mean funky? Looks funky. Well, you heard it here first, folks. It's a funky tree. What can I say? Now, since we also used azalea leaves, I think we could try using some of the glowberry vines minus the glowberries. If I plant some of these here and we cut them before they get too long. And here is the tree in its final form. Now we just need to add some sunflowers. But instead of adding these pathetic normal sunflowers, I want to add giant sunflowers. So let's build our first prototype sunflower. I just need to make sure to make it nice and tall. Oh, and they also have giant leaves all the way up the stem. Kind of like this. And we also need to make sure all of the sunflowers actually face the sun. That is extremely important. And I know it looks a little bit tragic right now, but look what happens when I add all the sunflower petals using three different shades of yellow. Suddenly, it looks like a real sunflower. <gasps> I love it. It actually makes the tree look small. Somehow. Is the tree small? Let's copy this and see how big it is next to the tree. Ta-da! I may have made a terrible mistake here. That is far too big. Okay, new plan. We build a smaller sunflower up here and we use the power of perspective to make sure the tree still looks big. If Disney World can do it, so can I. Now that looks kind of tiny next to the tree, but with the perspective of this sunflower, I think we can make this look good, but we definitely need more sunflowers. Oh my gosh, this is looking so cute. But before I add more flowers, I need to add something that's going to pollinate all of these giant flowers. Lots of bees. So let's summon in plenty of bees. And then I'm going to give these bees a special job to do. This army of bees will help the druids defend their grove against enemies. And the druids of the sun have just one arch enemy. Darkness. And in Minecraft, that comes from the deep dark. And as such, any skulk items are forbidden in this grove. And anyone that enters the grove carrying skulky items will feel the wrath of my bee army. So all I have to do is figure out how to make bees hostile towards players if they're carrying skulk. This one tests if the player has any skulk items in their inventory. And if they do, this makes the bees angry and they will attack the player until the skulk blocks are removed. And instead of testing this out on myself, I'm gonna invite Joel to this world and sacrifice him to the bees instead. So here's a chest with some skulk and it's showtime. Okay, why don't you Ooh. open the chest and grab the skulk? Grab the skulk? Yeah. Grabbed it. Oh, good. Ow, what the heck? What the heck, why did the bees not like me? Ow, ow, ow. Stupid bees. Ow, what the heck? How many bees are there? Oh, Lizzie, is this all you invited me on for? I thought you wanted some help. Oh, no, that worked perfectly. Thank you. That's cool. I like that. What the? F that's sick. How'd you do that? Command blocks. The next thing I want to add to my druid grove is some buildings. So let's get some wool and start to plan out where the buildings can go. 
This is just a rough plan, but it should end up looking something like this. So I'm gonna start with this one back here. And I have decided this will be a communal food hall where all the druids will gather to eat together. So the very first step of Lizzie's chaotic guide to building is to plan out the size and shape of the build. Then I stared at it for a while wondering what to do. And then it came to me. Dark oak for the framing, mud and mud bricks for the walls, some dark oak planks here, some dark oak planks over there, and for the roof, a combination of moss and grass. And voila, the first build is complete. So now all we have to do is start decorating the inside because it looks a little bit empty. First, glowberries. Oh my gosh, okay, that is a little too much. I'm gonna strip all the glowberries away and give these vines a haircut. I just want some really short vines, just to add some texture to the ceilings. And the ceiling is complete. Now we just need to decorate this place to look like a food hall. So first we need somewhere to store all of the food over here. So I will place a few barrels around like this. Also, we can put them up here to look like they're on shelves, if you use your imagination. And because they have so many bees, I think it makes sense that they would have loads of honey stored in here. So let's make these beehives full of honey. <gasps> and it looks like an overflowing honey storage chest. Kind of a health and safety issue, but it looks cool, so I'm gonna let it slide. What else can we use to look like storage? <gasps> Ooh, how about the loom, but from the side? That kind of looks like empty shelves. If we line these up here, like so, I'll just cover up the telltale loom side and nobody would ever know. You know, unless they click it and realize it's a loom. So that is the food storage area. Now we just need somewhere for all of them to sit and eat. And I think that they would all sit together on a long table like so. And let's build a few more of these. There. Plenty of places to sit and eat. Alas, there is no food in here. But that is what we're going to build next. The centerpiece for this food hall is going to be a stew pot in the middle of the room here. So, at first, I thought maybe we could just put down a campfire and a cauldron, but it looks a little bit weird. So, I had a crazy idea using command blocks to make a giant campfire. Ta-da! How much more impressive does that look? This is just a block display of a campfire, but bigger and better than your average campfire. And now that we have this rather impressive cooking setup, I thought it would be fun to turn this into a bit of a cooking mini game to throw different food items into the stew to trigger different events. Am I crazy? Yes. Three days later. I'm not even joking. It's actually been three days and I've run out of brain cells, but it's working. Please look away if you are sensitive to poorly optimized command blocks. I have a very chaotic process, okay? Just pretend you didn't see any of this chaos and you never have to look at it again because the cooking mini game is complete. And depending on what you throw into it, you will receive various different effects. Maybe a little bit of poison or even, ooh, some weakness. But that's only if you add the wrong ingredients. If, for example, you add one of the correct ingredients to the stew, cooked rabbit, you will see the stew starts to change. And if you add all 12 correct ingredients without making any mistakes, you'll make a good stew, which is extremely potent. Just look at all these potion effects I added. Absorption gives you these extra golden hearts. Resistance will protect you from damage. Saturation means you basically won't have to eat for an hour after eating this stew. And fire resistance makes this stew way more powerful than even an enchanted golden apple. So what are the ingredients for this magical stew, you may be asking? Well, that is a secret. And to discover the recipe, players will have to do some experimenting and some sleuthing, as I'll hide some clues to some of the ingredients throughout the Druid Grove. Speaking of the grove, it needs a few more buildings. So let's start over here with a few little houses for the Druids to live in. So first, I'm just gonna build the basic shape 
And now we can add the grass to the roof. And a little patch of dandelions. And there it is, a little mini version of the food hall. And now I just need to build several more of these in a few different shapes to turn this into a village. So let's get building. Ta-da! The houses are complete. That one has a hole in the roof. Hang on. Now they're complete. But this blue path is ruining everything. So let's test out some different blocks. Let's try various shades of brown. This is the color we want. And using the power of world edit, we will have this path done in no time. Look at the difference that this path has made to the village. Now everything actually looks connected, but I bet if I spawn in some villagers, they will just completely ignore all the paths I've made for them. Oh, yeah, off he goes. No respect for the paths. Now I still think it looks a little bit empty, so we definitely need some decorations. I was thinking right here, it would be kind of cute to build a honey cart. So let's build a little wagon. Very cute. And let's put some honey on top. Ooh, it would be cute if the honey dripped down and made a puddle. And let's also put a few beehives around, you know, for good marketing. And now all we need is a honey vendor. So I'm going to use a command to summon in a villager that only trades honey. Ta-da! Now we have a beekeeper and I made a whole little sunflower because he sells some very special honey. In exchange for rare exotic plants, you will receive sunflower honey collected by the bees of the sunflower grove. And in case you didn't guess, this special honey is in fact one of the ingredients in the mystery stew. So let's delete that command block and make a trade for some of this special honey. And now I can test it in the stew. Ta-da! Now I do want to add a lot more sunflowers to the sunflower grove because I think that you can never have too many sunflowers. Ta-da! How magical does this look now? The only problem is that they all have to face the same way because sunflowers do face the sun, which is that way. So I won't lie to you. It does not look as impressive from the back, but that's not my fault, that's nature. Now the next detail I want to add is some patches of wheat. And I've added some beehives to these as well. I think this contrasts with the yellow of the sunflowers quite nicely. And over here, this is quite a nice little spot for a garden. So let's have a beehive and some of these pink petals because I just love these so much. And I came up with a fun idea, flowering azaleas, but on top of them, we add pink petals. <gasps> oh my gosh, that looks adorable. And as you can see, the bees love it too. Oh, and of course, that is another one of the clues for the stew. One of the ingredients is pink petals. Ta-da! And let's also add in a clue for the next ingredient, which is frog spawn. For this, I think we're going to need a frog pond and this would be the perfect place to build it. So let's turn all of this into stone first and then fill this in with water. Now this still looks a bit boring, so let's add some details like these rocks on the edge of the pond, some mud, <gasps> lily pads, and drip leaves. Ta-da! And now all we need are some frogs. So let's see what color. <gasps> Orange! Because this is a sunflower plains biome. They're perfect. So there we have some clues for a few of the ingredients. The rest will require some experimentation. Next, I'm going to add another little mini game to this area that I call the bee hunt. And I got this idea from World of Warcraft where there's a quest to search for all these crystals that are hidden throughout the world. And if you find all of them, you get a reward. So I'm gonna make my own version right here in the Druid Grove. And I have the perfect idea. When I was decorating all of the houses, in one of them, I actually added this little bee figurine. And now that I think about it, this would be the perfect item to hide for the players to look for. So. This one's pretty obvious. This should definitely be the first one. But right now, nothing happens when you click it. 
So, we need some command blocks to make the magic happen. And I will do it behind here, where nobody will look. This command summons in a new interaction, and if the player clicks on it, the bee disappears to nowhere, because we still have some work to do. Let's add it back for now, and add another finishing touch, because I think it would be a good idea for some text to pop up on the screen, telling the player that something is going on. So let's add some more command blocks. And now, when you click on the bee, ta-da, the bee hunt begins. So now the player will have to search for the next location where the bee has appeared. And I think the perfect location is over here. Up here, I built an overflowing beehive with lots of honey dripping down. So let's put our little hidden bee up here. And I've set up all the command blocks. So when you click on this bee, the hunt will continue to the next location. And I thought it'd be kind of cute to hide one over here on the honey cart. If they look around the corner at the back of the cart, they'll find another bee. And the hunt continues. This time, they'll have to get all the way up here to tag this bee, which will require some drip leaf parkour. But don't worry, it's perfectly easy. I'm sure I can do it myself. Like so, very easy. No! Well, luckily I have creative mode so I can fly. And the hunt continues. Next, I hid a bee over here on this shelf and another one tucked away in a house. And that leads us to the final bee. I thought the perfect place for this would be to hide it on the big tree somewhere. And I discovered that it is actually hollow on the inside. So naturally, bees would probably form a hive in there. And this would be a cute place to hide the final bee. So let's put some honeycomb. Now I've basically made a parkour staircase out of honeycomb, but we definitely need more honey. Dripping it down and covering the floor. Ta-da! Now this looks like a real hive. It's just missing some bees. And now all we need to do is hide our little bee figurine. I think over here would be perfect. And this time, instead of disappearing when the player clicks it, let's add some commands so that when they find the final bee, they will be rewarded with a bee figurine of their very own. Ta-da! Now they can take this home and use it to decorate. And that completes my Sunflower Druid Grove, so let me know in the comments what you think of the build and the interactive elements. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Bye!